Uh, we had the opportunity to be out here at Easter, and that was, that was fantastic. And uh, when we, uh, we were here for Easter, Tony Romo came over and shared his faith with us, and we talked about his life and career, and that was great. And when we thought about this service, we thought about one of our own, and that is Darren Woodson, who, along with Tiffany, are members of Preston Wood. He is, of course, a great Dallas Cowboy legend. He's in the ring of honor. He's on the ballot for the National Football Hall of Fame. He's one of the great players in Dallas Cowboy history. Come on up here, Darren Woodson. Yeah. Joining me is David Shivers. Thanks, Pastor. Come on up, David. And uh, let's, let's get up here a little bit. Uh, so, Darren, really thanks for coming out. David, why don't you come on over here? You know what, Pastor? Let me, can I? Yep. Hey, son, can you hold this phone? My son's going to UT as a baseball player, right? Hey, come on. We're going to see if he can catch. Can you catch? <laughs> you better go! drop it. There you go. Uh -huh. Baseball player. I don't know why. He's a baseball a player. Football, we always bro. tried to get Played you at Prestonwood Christian Academy, but we never could get you there. <laughs> but, good hands. Uh, really good glad hands. for your career, yeah. Well, okay, let's talk about, uh, Darren, uh, your growing up years. Arizona, yeah. right? And uh, give us a little background of how you got started and, and especially just your faith journey, how that all began with you back uh, when you were a young man. Um, You're still a young man. I'm, well, I hope so. <laughs> I'm getting there. Um, well, for me, it started off, we went, we didn't just go to church. We lived in church. <laughs> and my mother raised four of us. It was uh, my brother, uh, Randy, Monica, and, and my, my brother, Todd. And she was a single parent. So and the way she kept us off the street was she went to work, worked two jobs. And we got up in the morning and, or after school, we cut the lawn at the church down the street. Uh, we cleaned the pews, the restroom, and this was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. As you can imagine, every day she kept us in the church. And that's how, at a young age, at a, I mean, I'm talking three, four, five years old, I got to know the Lord. I got, and I sat in the church, and there were times where I got thumped in the head for not paying attention. <laughs> but she gave us that path early. She introduced me at an early age, and it wasn't just myself, it was my brothers and sisters as well, so uh, that's, how, that's how I got started, but it wasn't until I got into college, and I was at Arizona State University, and I was a junior in college, and it was pre pretty much at the height of my time. I was, you know, I was all Pac-12 or all Pac-10 back then, and you know, everything was going good, and there wasn't anything bad in my life, but I was in bed, it was two o'clock in the morning, and, and as you can imagine, I'm 20 years old, and everything is great in my life at the time. You know, you think a college kid, 20 years old, having a good time. But God came to me, mm. Mm. and yeah. it was in the middle of the night. And I didn't know how to react. All I knew was I was on the ground crying. And you just, uh, just believed that God's presence was His there. His presence was there. I know. I mean, yeah. I, I don't believe. I know. Yeah. His presence was there. And yeah. you could, I mean... The feeling that I had in that room, in my, in, in my little small apartment, the feeling that I had in his presence being there, I was just at all, and I was, uh, and he was magnified. It, was, it wasn't like I saw something that was bright or anything. I just knew he was there in the room, and he knew, I knew that he had a plan for me in my life. So that's, that's, that was my journey as far as my faith. And so that, uh, you know, growing up as a child in the church and had a great mom. I mean, what, what were some of the things, obviously, you told us that your mom got you in church, but what was it about your mom and her faith, her perseverance that strength. inspired you? Just strength. her yeah. strength, her strength and her, her willingness to, to, to follow the word, her willingness to introduce us to the word, her willingness to sit there in the middle of the night after she worked two jobs and read scriptures to us at 11 p.m. Wow. Knowing she had to wake Man. up at 5 a.m. the next morning. I mean, we were kids that, that she would wake up in the middle of the night and have these, these conversations with just about, you know, what she expected of us and what God expected of us. Mm. And how we were not only to, to, to hear the word of God, but to give, give the word of God. And, and, and that's, I think that's the, what I, I learned so much about my mother and her strength is that she continued to persevere through bad times. We lived in the projects in, in Phoenix, in Henson Projects. And she never wait. I, and I kn had no idea that I was poor. I know I was rich in the Lord. Yeah. I had no idea that I was poor. 
uh, at all. And she just, she continued to give and give and give. I need to say something though, because I, I'm, uh, you know me, Shiv. Mm -hmm. I gotta say this, I, I have a lot of friends that when I walked up today, and you know, I, I'm, this is my, my family, my Prestonwood family, but when I walked up today, there were so many friends mm. that I hadn't seen in a long time. And you know, the, the Bible says, you know, sharpens those should sharpen you. Iron uh, sharpens uh, iron. Yeah. Iron sharpens iron. And, and there's a few of them. Where's Steve Jarvie? Where's he's Steve? Yeah, I know he's a Preston Wood. Steve Jarvie. Yeah, Steve's here. got his whole you know, class over there. Yeah, he's got a whole Sunday <laughs> school class. Guys, good but to see you. Every day, Steve Jarvie and I went work together. Every day, Tyler Klutz. He's somewhere around here. I don't know where Tyler is. Uh, ben Cowboy, Gibbs. Uh, he was former Cowboy fullback, former, right? Yeah, former Cowboy fullback. He couldn't play, though. He didn't, he didn't have no idea. <laughs> he did not play the game. Anyway, he's a good football player. But every day, it's, it, it's beyond just the relationship. It's, that's who sharpens me on a daily day basis. My wife, of course. My kids. But when I'm out and I'm on the street and I'm doing things out, out in the community, my family at work have been tremendous. Good men who know the Lord and continue to serve. And, uh, you know, that's what, you want, that's what I want to surround myself with. Absolutely. That's the joy. That's when you wake up and joy brings you, yeah. uh, wakes you up in the morning. Yeah. Well, that is good. Go ahead and yeah. uh, clap that out. That's, uh, that's great Bob for sure. Yeah. So, Where are Bob and Steve? There's so, 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 okay, well, that's, that's faith, and, and obviously, clearly, that's first in your life. But uh, let's talk a little football. Shiv, you got some, uh, some football questions here? I do. I do, Pastor. So sports have been a huge part of your life, obviously, as a young man uh, coming up in the projects, uh, mm -hmm. not only being in church, but playing hard, playing all the sports. Some of you may not know, you know Darren as a football player, but he was a great baseball player. Son Jaden's going to the University of Texas on a baseball scholarship, and um, then through the Cowboys, and now being on NFL Live and yeah. Sports Center on a regular basis. Sports have been a huge part of your life. Tell us uh, just a little bit about what sports has taught you and some of those parallels spiritually. Uh, how to overcome. You know, sports has really taught me at a young age. You know, when you're when you're a young kid. When I was a young kid, I played against other guys, and I was. I, I'm not, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that when I was a young kid, I was a pretty good football player. And as I got older and I got into college, those players, it caught up. The talent caught up, yeah. especially in college. And when you get into college, you get knocked on your butt. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to win every last battle. And you have to find a way to overcome. I think that's the one thing sports has taught me is that you're going to get knocked down, but find a way to get up. How do you respond? How do you respond to the adversity, and in life is the same way. That, and I think that's what Jesus pulls you up is, okay, you got knocked down, but as long as I'm faithful, yeah. you know, as long as I stay faithful to the Lord, he's going to always pull me up. I, I know someone has, I know that God has my back all the time. So I think I, I, I sort of relay those two the, together because I've, I've had to overcome so much in my life, coming up in the projects, uh, coming up through high school. My best friend did 26 years in prison, 26 years because he made a terrible mistake and he went along one path, but I just knew God, I knew he was going one way, but God had it set for me in another way. So you talk about some of those guys in your Prestonwood family, your work family that sharpen you. You got to play with some of the greatest Cowboys yeah. of all time of our era, the triplets, the name some Jay Novacek, one of the great uh, tight ends yeah. in Cowboys history. Were there uh, one or two of those guys that were either an inspiration or uh, that uh, had a special place in your heart that encouraged you? Well, I think, yeah, but, I mean, listen, I think a lot of the guys that, that I played with are, they're special to me in some way. In, in some way, whether it be as far as growth as a man or just, you know, how to, you know, you, you always take bits and pieces from certain people. I, but I think there were, there were two people spiritually that really, pushed me to the next level. And, and that was a man by the name of John Weber, who was a, our chaplain yeah. with the Cowboys. And he could care less who you were, if it was Troy Aikman or Michael Irvin. He came to you in a, in a way to where you appreciated, you saw the Lord in his face. Mm -hmm. You saw the Lord in, in his walk. And That's a great encouragement for all of us yeah, to be so, that kind of person. And, and, and that, so, so the guys that I play with, yeah. no, nah, I don't, I mean, hey, we're great teammates, <laughs> and I love those guys. I, I love them dearly, but there was one man named John Weber who would grab me, even on Saturdays. Every Sunday you have a game, but you have chapel, 
either Saturday night or Sunday morning, uh, depending on the team. And, and, be, and sometimes before the games on Sunday mornings, we would get up and he would make us get up before we went to meetings and we would serve. We would serve the Lord and then go into the meetings later on. But, you know, t another guy named Charlie Biggers, who was with the Cowboys as a chaplain as well, who, who, uh, who played as a football player at Texas Tech, but uh, came to us with the Cowboys. And, you know, it, it's one thing to play the game, but you always know in the back of your mind that, you know, you're always trying to serve the Lord in every single way. Yeah, and one more thing. When you went into the uh, Cowboys Ring of Honor, yeah. I mean, that's very special. Um, the greats of the greats of cowboy history are uh, emblazoned uh, on the stadium. Uh, I was there. I had the opportunity to be there when you were inducted. I heard your speech. You really gave glory to God. What did that mean to you um, as a Christian, as a former player, as, you know, now uh, I know you still care about the cowboy organization, but to see that go up, your name go up there, as long as that stadium stands, what did that mean to you? It, well, it meant a lot because I was able to t uh, to give my testimony in front of a lot of people that day, <laughs> and, and to get to uh, allow the, the world to know that you know I'm standing on my faith. But I think the the one thing that to, to to be mentioned in the Ring of Honor is it's it's all fun and games because you know you get your name up there, your your family gets to see it, uh, your friends get to see it, and they recognize you and and whatnot. But to me, it didn't. I don't care to be identified as just a football player. I need more in my life. I need, I, I'm looking for, for more. I'm looking to serve more. I'm looking to serve others at the same time. So I was able to give my testimony that day, and hopefully that, if that testimony on the star that day at AT&T AT Stadium helps someone else and moves someone else towards God at the same time. So, you know, it, it was fun. It, it was great, and I got honored and all that, man. But I, I had the stage for... Five minutes. Jerry was trying to eat into my time. <laughs> but the Lord won, won out, man. <laughs> Amen. The Lord always does. Thank you, Darren Woodson. Let's express our appreciation, buddy. Thank you, man.